guys, I'm Michael from eKids. Hey there. And now we are studying the Old Testament. And I'm really excited about it because, you know, Jesus in the New Testament, when he was asked, like, what's the most important thing about the Old Testament? Huh? This is what he said. He quoted something from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And it says this. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. I get it. I get it. It says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Let me read it again. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your might. Hmm. Mm. So what I want you to do as you watch this video is see if these characters in the story, see if they love God with all of their heart, wow. all of their soul, wow. and all of their strength. Wow. So check it out. All right, guys, the last time that we talked about David, we were talking about David and Jonathan, and that was 1 Samuel chapter 18. So let's catch up. So I got my Bible, and I'm going to look at the table of contents right here. And I'm going to look down until I find 1 Samuel, which I see it. It's on page 239. So I'm going to go to page 239. Boom! 239. There it is, 1 Samuel. And remember, the big numbers are the chapters, the little numbers are the verses. Like these big numbers. See the big number 4 right there? So the big numbers are the chapters. So I need to find the big number or chapter 18. And 18. There it is, big number 18. And something I want to show you guys in some Bibles, mine's an English Standard Version. And in an English Standard Version Bible, they have headings. Now, I know you can't quite read it, but up here are some really cool things. Like, this tells you what's going on in that part of the scripture. See? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you some of these headings so we can see what happens between chapter 18 and 24. Because I want to talk to you about chapter 24 today. Chapter 18 talks about David and Jonathan's friendship and how Saul was jealous of David. And then David gets married to Michal. And then Saul tries to kill David. And then Jonathan warns David. Now we learned some of that stuff last time. But it continues and we find out that there's this weird thing where David eats some holy bread. That's a really weird story. David flees, or he escapes, he runs away, and he goes to this place called Gath. And then he goes to this cave of Adullam, and so he kind of hides there for a bit. And then this weird thing happens where Saul, he's getting worse and worse. Remember Saul? That was Jonathan's dad. He was the king. He kills some priests at this place called Nob. That's not good. In chapter 23, David still continues to serve Israel. He goes to, to war and he saves the city of Kela. And then, even though David's doing good things, Saul continues to try to kill David. That gets us into chapter 24, where, well, I'm not going to read the heading there because I want you to hear the story. So here we go. 1 Samuel chapter 24. Check it out. Chapter 24. After Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told, David is in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 chosen men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the crags of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way. A cave was there, and Saul went in to relieve himself. David and his men were far back in the cave. The men said, This is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Then David crept up unnoticed and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Afterward, David was conscience-stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lift my hand against him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. With these words, David rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. Then David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, My Lord the King! When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He said to Saul, Why do you listen when men say, David is bent on harming you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lift my hand against my master, because he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. 
I cut off the corner of your robe but did not kill you. Now understand and recognize that I am not guilty of wrongdoing or rebellion. I have not wronged you, but you are hunting me down to take my life. May the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me. But my hand will not touch you. As the old saying goes, from evildoers come evil deeds, so my hand will not touch you. Against whom has the King of Israel come out? Whom are you pursuing? A dead dog? A flea? May the Lord be our judge and decide between us. May he consider my cause and uphold it. May he vindicate me by delivering me from your hand. When David finished saying this, Saul asked, Is that your voice, David, my son? And he wept aloud. You are more righteous than I, he said. You have treated me well, but I have treated you badly. You have just now told me of the good you did to me. The Lord delivered me into your hands, but you did not kill me. When a man finds his enemy, does he let him get away unharmed? May the Lord reward you well for the way you've treated me today. I know that you will surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hands now. Swear to me by the Lord that he will not cut off my descendants or wipe out my name from my father's family. So David gave his oath to Saul. Then Saul returned home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. One day, Saul heard that David was in the wilderness of En Gedi. Yink! So Saul gathered 3,000 of his skilled fighters and went to find and kill David. During Saul's search for David, he went in a cave to relieve himself. Well, this very cave was the one where David and his men were hiding. And when David's men saw that Saul was unaware that David was there and unable to defend himself, they said, Now's your chance, David. This is God telling you that he will give you your enemy to do with as you wish. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of Saul's robe. But then David began to think that it was not right for him to take Saul's life. For no matter how much hardship and difficulty Saul had caused him, it was still not right for him to hurt the one who God had placed over Israel. So David told his men to back off, and he did not let them kill King Saul. They waited until after Saul had left the cave, and then David ran out of the cave and shouted after Saul, My king, why do you listen to people who say I am trying to harm you? Look, I cut it off, but I didn't kill you. This proves that I am not trying to harm you and that I have not sinned against you, even though you've been hunting me. David went on to promise that he would never harm Saul. David said that God would be the one to protect David and to rescue him from Saul's power. Saul said, is that really you, David? And he began to cry. Saul said, You are a better man than I. You have been amazingly kind to me today, for when God put me in a place where you could have killed me, you didn't do it. Who else would have done this? And now I realize that you are surely going to be king, and the kingdom of Israel will flourish under your rule. But promise me that when that happens, you will not kill my family. So David promised that he would not hurt Saul's family, and they left each other in peace. So what did you think? Wow! Did these characters really show that they loved God with all of their heart? Yep. All their soul? Yep. And all of their strength? Yep. What do you think? And you know, just as importantly, what about you? Uh... What can you learn from these characters to see how you can love God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, all of your strength? That's a good point. How can you love God with everything you have? All right, guys, that's all I have for you this week. Love you. Bye. See ya. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your might.